Yo, yo, yo. Let's make an aleatoric patch. So to set this up, I've just put a sampler in here, and the sample doesn't have any samples in it. And my idea for this patch is I'd like to put a whole bunch of acapellas in here. And the challenge here is that I want to be able to cut through these acapellas randomly. But every time that we go to a new acapella, I want to randomly choose a place inside of that acapella to play. So I want two levels of randomness. I want to be able to randomize what sample in the zone I'm playing, and then also randomize the index, the sample index. So here's my approach, and this is made way easier with Live 11. I love this expression control. I've just added this, and under MIDI in, you have random right here, and I've just selected that all the way down, even though I might just use one. So I'm going to hit map right here and go ahead and put this onto the sample selector, which is under cell selection zone. So when we put a bunch of samples in here, we're going to distribute ranges equally. And every time we get a new note, this is just going to choose a different sample in there. That's the first thing that we do. The second thing is we're going to pull up this velocity MIDI effect preset that I like to use a lot. This is called Total Random, and it just came with Live. And it's great because this literally completely randomizes the velocity. And we're going to send that in sampler over to our velocity. And we're going to do sample offset. So now the random velocities are going to be indexing randomly through the sample. OK, now let's load this up having done that initial patching. So now we're cutting through 25 different samples, and actually 26, and we are indexing to different places every time. And now let's give this a shot with the pitch envelope. There we go. It sounds cooler when it's moving all the time, I noticed. you know, I don't want it to be the exact same thing every, t every single time it hits going up and down. So maybe we found another set of parameters that we can fill up the rest of this expression control with. I am just going to pick out a couple. Let's see. We want to do amount. Put that on macro 2. Let's do attack, decay. All right, so when I hit go, this is just going to go nuts. <laughs> and that might be what you want, but this is one of the benefits of having macros. I personally think that using the map right here and working with the ranges right here is way easier than working with the ranges right here. It's kind of meta. There are a couple different ways you can do it. But uh, let's say, for instance, we don't want the min-max to be all the way up at positive and negative 48. Let's say bottom, an octave, top, an octave. Let's say the attack doesn't need to go out to 20 seconds. It could probably top out around 200 milliseconds. And we'll also say that about the decay. <laughs> Maybe we want to bring the decay out a little bit more. There we go. That's starting to sound like a, a turntable. That's, re that's really cool. And then the other thing that we can do is we can now go back over to the expression control and we can add slew rate. We got this rise and fall right here. We got all these juicy parameters. <laughs> Maybe keep it like the size of a transient, somewhere between 30 and 60. You know, I bet you could also put these on macros and you could probably get like an LFO to change these. That's a fun thing. I have not tried that yet. I hope someone else tries that. Oh, except not on sample select. That's the one thing we want to be instantaneous. Okay, let's watch it now. Ah, so much smoother. Watch it go. <laughs> Yeah, that's sounding really, really cool. 
All right. I think that to top this off, it would be really great to have some kind of aleatoric echo. So I've created this divinish echo, which I've used in other parts of this project. And I'm just going to put this right on there. There we go. And this has got the, these LFOs right here just tweech, tweaking the gain and the feedback. Let's hear how it sounds with this thing. I think the very last thing that we'll do to top this off is, well, when you're, ch when you're choosing a lot of samples, you really want to control and regulate the dynamics. Especially, these are all different qualities. Some of them are kind of low quality, and some are a lot of them are at different volumes in here. Some are compressed, some are not. So we want to kind of standardize everything, and to do that, we're going to use multiband dynamics. And let me show you a really cool trick. With vocals, you can normally just separate it into mids and highs. But in multiband dynamics, notice that the highs by default is 2.5K. That just happens to be the same range as like S's and T's in the vocals. And you can see that this is one of the most dynamic ranges. You know, the high frequencies there are can be quite harsh and quite crisp, especially between different recordings. So we're gonna really crush this range. I mean, we're gonna go to downwards compression here. You can see the ratio. And let's go ahead and catch peaks and let's make it really fast. like. All the way fast and at first this will sound kind of dull yeah, that's what it normally is but it's doing the trick right about there and one cool thing about the top range is that if, if you compress it a lot you know if you really really go in there you can end up just turning it up here in the output and get it back to its like full crispiness glory. And if you're ever wondering how much you can cr crank it right here, keep an eye over here. You have the gain reduction. You see, I saw the number 18, negative 24, and stuff like that. So that's how much volume it's taking away, and it's a pretty good estimate of how much head headroom you might have in, in the output. So I think that we're actually safe up at like 10, 11, 12 decibels. And then, of course, if you're going to do some extreme dynamic compression on one part of the spectrum, you should at least balance it with a little bit of compression on the other part. So I'm going to do a healthy 1 to 4 ratio. There we go. And now it's sounding like really evened out. Now that we have this as kind of a safeguard there too, we can even like throw some filter in here, for instance, and like... And we know that no matter what we do with the resonance, that it, it, it won't be blaringly loud or anything like that.